Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. In this video, we'll look into how to enable role-based access using security groups in Azure AD. We'll use the same sample from the last video where we enabled Managed Service Identity or MSI for an Azure function to talk to a web API. If you have not watched that yet, check it out here or look for the link in the description below. We have the Azure function set up to talk to the web API using the MSI token provider and log out the values. I have this all set up in the Azure portal where we can see this in action. Clicking run, executes the function which talks to the API and logs out the values as expected. As you can see, the web API currently returns for all authenticated requests. We might need to restrict this to certain groups or sections of people in our organization. Let's look at how to restrict this endpoint for only admin users. First, we'll create an admin user group and then add the Azure function MSI as part of that. For that, let's go to Azure Active Directory. Under Groups, I already have the admin group created. Under Members, Let's go and add the Azure function MSI principle. Searching for the function name, you can see the MSI principle for that. You can add and select that. If you're dealing with the web app, which has users logging in, you can very well add members, which are those usernames. For example, I can add myself as an admin. But for this example, we'll just use the MSI service principle. Going back to the Azure directory, let's go and update the application manifest. It's under app registrations, let's go to the AD app that's used to authenticate and update the manifest so that it returns the security groups. The group membership claims I have already updated to security group. This enables the token to have the security group information of the logged in user. Let's head back to Visual Studio and go to the values controller. We now need to add the authorize attribute and say the policy and give it a name, the admin policy. To add the admin policy in startup.cs, I have added this line of code. Let's look at what this is doing. Services.add authorization and you add a policy for the specific authorization. In this case, I've used the name admin. You can then add a requirement to that policy saying it needs to be a member of a group requirement. This is a custom created class, which is nothing but a value object that holds the group name and the group identifier. The group ID is retrieved from the Azure portal under the groups that we've created with the name admin. We have a group member handler which handles this requirement and it implements a specific class. All that it does is get the claims of the user from the context and then checks for the group's claims and see if this ID is present in there or not. Since we have enabled that in the manifest, the token will have the group IDs passed if the user is part of the group. If this ID is found, it says it's a success. If not, it just passes on to the next policy check in the pipeline. You also need to make sure that you register the handler as a singleton instance of the authorization handler. Now that this is all set up, let's publish this code into the Azure portal. We have only changed the web API, so let's just publish that. Clicking Publish, let's head back to the Azure portal and verify this. To test this, let's initially remove the MSI principle from the group. The Azure function should now fail with an unauthorized exception. You can see it's a forbidden request. 
Let's go back and add the MSI principle to the security group. Running the function again, you can now see that it, it successfully returns the value back because it's part of the security group admin. If you get this token from the output, copy that, go to a site jwt.io, which enables you to inspect these tokens. Paste that token in here, and you can see that the groups has the ID of the AD group that we created. This is enabled because we added in the security group in the group membership claims of the manifest. Hope this helps you to enable role-based access using Azure AD security groups. Thank you.